In this video, we will cover the four basic design elements to consider when making a scientific research poster. These elements include typography, balance, color, and composition. We're focusing on these because they are the most significant and easiest to apply when it comes to making a poster. An important note to remember is to be intentional with your design choices. Every choice you make, whether it's visual or content-based, conveys information to the audience. Also, before beginning, it is important to review the guidelines of the conference or event you're presenting at. You absolutely want to be sure you meet their criteria. With that, let's get started. Typography is the first element we'll discuss, which is just a fancy way of saying font choice. The best rule of thumb is to choose a font to keep it simple. You should choose no more than two fonts for your research poster. In general, one font is for the titles and the other font is for the body text. Any more than two fonts becomes visually overwhelming and unnecessary. Depending on how your poster is being presented will determine what is the best approach for choosing a font. Serif fonts are generally considered a good choice for body text and print materials. However, the best practice for text for web or other digital items is sans serif fonts. Serif fonts include the little feet or extra strokes incorporated into different font families. What the extra stroke does is create an implied line that helps the reader follow along. Sans serif or non serif is the opposite. They don't include extra strokes. These fonts are best used in digital settings. When considering the right font to use, you can't go wrong with the classics, Arial, Times New Roman, Helvetica. If you are using PowerPoint as your base program for editing, we recommend the following font sizes for each of the text-based elements in your poster. Readability is the most important consideration when choosing fonts. So avoid making fonts too small or too distracting. The next design element to consider is balance. In this context, we were using the term balance to refer to a variety of visual elements. In other words, your poster should not only contain words, which is visually boring, where possible include images, graphs, or tables to bring variety and communicate your content in different ways. If you're using PowerPoint for editing, images should be imported as JPEG or PNG formats, preferably 300 DPI for printing large scale or 72 DPI for large dimensions. This step prevents your images from appearing pixelated. As a reminder, whether the image is open sourced or copyrighted, always give credit to the photographer or author by citing the source. This is a professional courtesy and protects you from plagiarism. Some resources for open source images include unsplash.com, pixels.com, stocksy.com, and deathtostockphotos.com. A good website for open source medical images is OpenEye at openeye.nlm.nih.gov. Several paid subscription databases may also provide downloadable images, such as Access Medicine Suite or Anatomy TV. Connect with the library to receive assistance with this access. Color is the third element to consider when making a poster. Generally, color schemes for scientific posters follow the brand guidelines of the organization where the research is conducted. These organizations include the university, a hospital system, or a company. As a Health Science Center student, you may likely use one of the five research poster templates found on the Office of Marketing and Communication resource page. For reference, the color codes for the HSC brand are as follows. As you are designing your poster, be sure to avoid large areas of black and other extremely dark colors. When printing a poster, dense areas of ink can make the paper physically weak and take a long time to dry. If you have freedom to select colors outside of the designated brand, consider matching your colors to other imagery you have incorporated. Finally, the last element to consider is composition. 
It's important to avoid crowding your poster with too much content. Composition is the harmony of all the elements in your poster. A good composition will have a natural flow and give the viewer a variety of interest points to draw them in. The best way to accomplish this is to be conscious of your margins and spacing. Be sure to have a uniform gutter around your whole poster. Also check with the gaps between the rows are consistent. This may be an obvious note, but with left to right reading languages, you'll also want to start from the top left. Altogether, these four elements, typography, balance, color, and composition, are quick ways to ensure that you create a beautiful research poster, one that highlights and supports your completed research. Don't forget, there might also be specific instructions about either the size or format that might be unique to a particular event. Remember to double check before you submit. I'm Lorraine Sheldon from the library. Thanks for watching. We hope this has been a helpful video. You can also connect to resources by visiting the library or the Center for Academic Performance Writing website. For more information, check out our full series of scientific writing, poster design, and professional presenting.